Hi folks, I'm welcome to your Gelsnet post-match press conference reaction after Rangers 3-1 victory over Hibs in today's Scottish Premiership encounter. Here in the gantry at Ibrox, myself Craig Gray, joined as ever by Scott Bradley. Scott, 3-1-1 for Rangers. Um, we're saying... Uh, it wasn't it great, was it? It wasn't great. No, it was I'll be right. honest, it wasn't great, but his job done overall, but... There is some one or two concerns, but we'll get into that. No, I thought that, to be fair, I thought it, I thought it was quite decent. I thought it was three going on five or six. Thing that concerns me is conceding the goal, but you know, we'll get we'll get on to that in a wee bit. But at the end of the day, nine games of the season left before today, one down, eight to go. Yeah, of course, yeah, and it was of course like you mentioned the Hibs goal that they scored. It was a really poor goal from Rangers to get from Rangers' point of view to give away, uh -huh. and but Rangers responded tremendously. And oh, you can see today as well, Craig, that the fans were right behind the team, and that was really refreshing to see as well. And of course, I don't want to be too negative, of course, right? But it was uh, this is what I've said to you in the press up, right? I know I'm probably jumping ahead here, but it's just in the wide areas that, that it, it, it does concern me. Like, for example, today, right, we've seen Scott Wright start. Don't want to be too harsh on him, but if he starts next week, I'll be very concerned because I know I, I've seen a few people on Twitter say they were quite happy with the way Scott Wright played today. I completely disagree. I felt as though Scott Wright was like a headless chicken. He, he, I, I'm not doubting his effort. He works hard, but he's just simply not good enough. Um, but what the thing was, the thing though as well though in the second half, though Craig, see when Matondo came on, he scored that beautiful goal. That has put him right in contention for starting next week. Yeah, and I mean I've I've written off Matondo tons of times, but to be fair, it was it was a great finish. I mean, see Scott Wright. I think today it encapsulated his Rangers career, right? I actually don't think he played that badly, but I think Scott Wright's problem is he'll get into a great position, he'll do the hard bit, and then his final ball, his delivery, always lets him down. I think that's been his issue throughout his whole Rangers career, but um, obviously we'll talk about that first incident. Penalty, I think it was Dessers that get filled. Tav steps up against Hibs, just like he did a couple of weeks ago at Easter Road, puts it down the middle, and he said in the press conference it was his wife that chose that, and he's not going to let her choose what way he takes a penalty again. But... Um, I mean, Nick Montgomery said it was a good save for David Marshall. I just thought it was a pretty hopeless penalty. But Scott Wright follows up. Good finish off the post. And then, um, bit of a weird incident. The goal gets chalked off um, for encroachment. Scott Wright, it does seem as in the box. But so is about seven or eight other Hibs players at the same time. I think worst case scenario, the penalty should have been retaken. But for whatever reason, David Dickinson, who I thought was horrific today, I did decides, not have a good game, decides no. to give a free kick to Hibs. Aye. Yeah, no, it was a real one, Craig, so it was. But yeah, as you said, that perfectly just sums up Scott Wright's luck at Rangers. Well, you seen him when he scored the goal, well, he thought he had scored. The relief in his face, he was like, oh, it was like a massive like monkey off his back. And then, and then the announcer goes the and the scorer for Rangers number two, James Tavernier. I know. He must have been thinking, oh, God, man, I've been waiting months and months and years for my score at Ibrox. He, he just can't catch a break, can he? I know, and then after the announcer corrects himself, he gets chalked off, you're like... Come on, man. I, I felt quite bad for him today in that sense, but he had an, there was another moment they had that was in the second half where he does brilliantly. A nice wee bit of skill to get um, past. Um, I think it was Obita on the right-hand side. Does, as I say, the hard bit, but then final ball lets him down. But, you know, yeah. hopefully hopefully he's not starting next Sunday. Um, no, no, he cannot start next week, Craig. And uh, as I said, I don't want to be too harsh on him, but he's, he is awful. He is. And he, he, honest to God, I just cannot understand how he's still... A Rangers player in uh, 2024, but yeah, stranger things have happened. <laughs> aye, aye, you're right there. I mean, luckily we never let the, the penalty miss and the chopped off goal get us down too much. It's about two minutes later. Captain Tav steps up. Exactly. An Beautiful absolute, finish as well. I was like, took a bit of a deflection, but they all count though. They do all count and people are mentioning in the press are there. It's almost as if after missing that penalty, Tav is like, nah, I'm not going to let this one see me up and he's absolutely whacked it it was like the oh, power yeah. on that it was, it was, oh, yeah. it, was, it, was it was brilliant and that's what I love about Tavernier like he never hides never hides when things aren't going well or whatever and it, he always just steps up to the plate and you've seen that as well obviously he missed that penalty he was like no I've got a point to prove here I need to redeem mm. myself and minutes later he done that and he scored a goal and got yeah. and he obviously Rangers took the lead through that no absolutely it was brilliant and I think we're at to, um, goal today's became um, I think the highest the highest scoring in British defender yeah. Uh, of all time it's pretty decent because Matt Graham Alexander took a hell of a load of penalties for Burnley back in the day didn't he so yeah. um, but uh, it's, it's unbelievable I think the manager gave him a wee nod <clears throat> in the press conference he done it in, uh, in the dressing room as well with the players after the game as well so it, it's a nice touch and you know 
hopefully in a couple of months' time, he could be putting us on to something bigger and better. Of course, you know? and big debtors as well. Like yes. He was, of course, we, I feel like you and I repeat ourselves talking about debtors, but it was the way it was going in the first half, just classic debtors, frustrating, where he was just overthinking things. But of course, Catmull with that lovely cross in the box, and debtors heads it away, and then of course, two one up. And also, we need to talk about Hibs' goal, sorry, but we're jumping out of the head here, but Hibs' goal, it was, I feel, I, honestly, I felt as though that goal was just coming. Because I, I felt as though the Rangers' defence were, were sleeping most of the time, and then Hibs eventually took advantage of it, and yeah, and it was just a really poor goal to, goal to give away from Rangers' point of view. Yeah, I mean, Tav in the, the press conference, he, he took responsibility for it, saying that he never kept up with his man. I mean, I suppose uh, he's got a point, he's probably putting himself out in the line there to maybe try and save the rest of the defence. I thought it was a common of errors, to be quite honest. I thought Buckland should have done better. I thought the defence in general was pretty all over the place for that one. But the thing that concerned me most of all was it was like a carbon copy of the Mioski goal against Aberdeen in the sense that, you know, the game's 1-0. And you remember, dominating the game, dominating the game. Hibs never had an inkling at goal. And then it's one chance right in the stroke of time, And they get that equaliser. Now, look, Aberdeen, Hibs... It's so, alright, you can maybe get away with it and you know, we we done really well against Aberdeen, we took our chances, we took our chances today. If that happens next Sunday against Celtic, you're not as confident going into the second half thinking that, you know, we're gonna go and get this result. So it's something that needs to be stamped out and cut out because I think one thing to watch in Celtic recently, they seem to be leaking a lot of goals. Um, you know, they played I think St Johnson the last game, they were three nothing up, St Johnson never had a chance until the last 10 minutes, one chance they had they scored. So, Celtic are leaking goals at the back. The last thing that we should be doing going into an old firm game next Sunday is also leaking goals at the back, in my yeah. opinion. So that is a concern, and it's something that we really need to tighten up on going yeah. into next week. No, 100%, yeah. And, but that's the thing, though, we're lucky we've got Jack Button, but we can't always need to be relying on him, you know? Yeah. And that's what that, yeah. well, he, he will have moments where he's not, like, as I say, he wasn't at fault for the goal. I thought he could have done a wee bit better, right? There's almost but, much you can do, yeah. Yeah, but like, he had a moment at Easter Road a few weeks ago, right? So even though Jack Butland, that seems like he's been Superman, he will still make mistakes. So the defence needs to be on top so that he doesn't have the chance to make the mistakes in the first place. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. But how do you, I was going to ask you, how do you feel about the, the Golden Suit partnership? Are you a fan of it? Because it has been getting lots of mixed reviews. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it, to be honest. I think... At the moment, it's probably the best we can do. I think Balogun, when when Clement came in, Balogun probably was the first choice. Probably since the Celtic gave him the red card. Kind of fell out of favour. It has kind of fell out of favour. Obviously, he's had his injury and stuff like that as well, big Balogun. And age doesn't help as well. It doesn't. I, I, think, I think the thing with the Celtic game is he looked his age in that game. Like, the red card that he got, it was almost like, I'll just pull him back. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I don't know what else to do. I'm not going to catch him, so maybe age is catching up to him. So I think at the moment, Suter and, and Goldson, it's the best bet. It's yeah, it's the best bet. I mean, Ben Davies. I'm on record with saying that I think he's terrible. How many games has he played since Clemens came in? Well, he played at Sparta Prague away because you know, remember he was taking corners. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I do <laughs> he, actually, he, was taking, yeah. he was taking corners in that game. Um, and I uh, ho hopefully we can get rid of Davies in the summer. Balogun will probably go in the summer, but. We definitely need a new centre back to come in. I like Suter. I think I think he's got his qualities, and I think we'll need him for you know squad depth and you know homegrown quotas and stuff like that. But I think long term we need to look at a, a new centre back to partner Goldson. Um, yeah. I thought was was okay today. He's been a bit dodgy lately, but he, he was okay. We today, talked about so. the Thunder's goal. Oh, so we started uh, started the show off yes. talking about it. But my God, that is that's a goal of season contender in my opinion. It was beautiful. It's what a, a strike! It's the goal of the season because it's Matondo that done it. I mean, the thing with Matondo is like that wee sort of cutting in the wee shimmy and shake and stuff like that. It's something that he does do a lot, but it's the second part that he doesn't really do well. But to be fair to him, man, it was some strike. I mean, we're going into that game next week against Celtic. I remember we were talking about it a week or so ago. Who do you play out in the left? Do you play Fabio Silva, Rabi Matondo? The thing is, after scoring that goal today, and I don't think Silva was great, Matondo probably is going to be the person that starts. He's probably, you know, Put his name out there, but oh, yeah, what a statement he made! Yeah, aye. he has to start, in my opinion. Yeah, but I'll ask you what will be your final third going into next week, right? So, obviously, the two winger striker and number 10. Um, well, I'd play, I'd play Cantwell and Lawrence. I said it to you last week, I think we should go for the juggler next week. I think we should play Cantwell and Lawrence together, press them like anything, go for it. 
Because if we win this game next week, I think that kills him completely. So go for it. Um, and actually, it's quite harsh on Diamandi, who, by the way, was outstanding today. I thought yeah, he was had a good performance. Match. So, yeah. to be honest, you can't really drop Diamandi next week after doing that. But I just think we've got an opportunity next week to go for them. Um, Do you think Simo will start? No, I don't think he will. Do you think it's a bit too early? Um, I don't know if it's a bit too early. I think if Sima had to start next week, he probably would. Um, yeah. And I thought he'd done really well when he came on. Yeah, I'm glad he got minutes, yeah, because I, w- um, I was I was saying that uh, during the game. And my pal was getting a bit worried because I'm like, if he doesn't get any game time here, I'm like, will he be even, will he even feature next week? Yeah. So I'm glad he got some minutes um, under his belt. And of course, when he came on, he done pretty well. Nearly scored a goal towards the end. So yeah, I'm delighted he's back because he's been a massive loss. Mm-hmm. No, it, it has been. Um, and you know, as you said, mate, it's good to good to get him get some minutes in after his injury. Yeah. Um, but no, three one win today. And oh, but before we wrap up, Craig, I, mean, actually, I know you've been very critical of Todd Cartwell, but what do you make his performance today? Of course, he got a nice bit of assist. Um, I thought he was. I thought he, he showed that he was a player coming back from a relatively long term injury today. Yeah, but he still contributed though. He so did. He I, did. He got his assist. Um, I thought he was alright. I had. I, I right. had him on to score. The guy in front of me actually said, "I don't know why he come on to take them off. He's my man of the match, like that." <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, mate. It was. It, it was. It was okay. I mean, you know, he got his numbers, but you know, Bonner, what do you make him? I thought he was all right. I know, of course, he seems like he's the, he was the weapon okay. boy. He does seem like he's the weapon boy of the Rangers support. But I thought he was okay today. Um, oh, yeah. he's, I thought his crossing was decent. Um, his passing was tidy. But we know what we're going to get with Bonner. He's not a, a player that's like a young match who's going to get the ball and try and take on players and bomb up and down that left-hand side. He's not that type of player, really. Yeah, I mean, the issue with Borna Barisic is when it comes to like his relationship with the fans is that he can put in a decent enough performance today, which he did. And then once he makes a mistake, whether it be a massive mistake or a small mistake, oh, you're this, you're that, get blah, 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 because that's basically what happened when he got booked, which I don't think was his fault. So I think Silva loses the ball and then Barisic is, you know, completely caught by the guy, he's not got a choice, he needs to bring him down, he needs to take one for the team, so I think Silva put Barisic in that position, but everybody's just on bat, it's like that, hey, this, that, the next thing, and then I was, and I'm still in two minds, I don't know what the manager was thinking about when he was taking him off, and I'm not questioning the manager, by the way, on that one, but when I say I don't know what he was thinking, I mean, I don't know if he took him off because he was on a booking, and maybe he's thinking ahead to next Sunday, you know, will Yelmaz be fit, yeah, will I think that's what be it was, fit, yeah. Or was he taking them off because he felt that he played absolutely rubbish? I'll just move Sterling to left back and I want to try that because I'm going to play Sterling at left back next Sunday. So I, 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 I don't know what the manager's thinking behind that was. I mean, nobody actually asked him in there. They probably should have, but let's face it, he wouldn't have gave it away what he's thinking was anyway. Know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I think if, you know, Yilmaz is fit at all next Sunday, he plays yeah. for me. Um, but you know Barisic can can still have a part to play, and again, look, I, f- I thought he was decent enough today. It was a you know a solid six six point five out of ten, which is really all you can ask for. Is that, that's out, that, out, out of players, you know, that's I don't that. think it was at fault for the goal. Um, it didn't come from his side anyway, um, and you know he got that booking. But I, I thought it was okay all, all in all. But a successful day at the office, obviously three one to Rangers, which is two points clear at the top of the table. And then one last question before we wrap up, Craig. Prediction for next week. I'm not answering that today. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even. I, listen, I'm, I won't even give you a prediction when the game is in its 89th minute next Sunday. Even if Rangers are winning 10 now, I still wouldn't give you a prediction. <laughs> well, do you know what? I'm going to give a prediction, and I'm going to say Rangers will win 2 0 next week. I'll take that. I'll take that. Rangers will win 2 0 next week. I think we'll all take that. Um, it'll be a tough game, but look, Dessels and Tavernier on the score sheet. Get it here first. I'll take that as well. I'll certainly take that. I, look, to be fair to Dessers, he, he obviously gets that goal today, but he's in form now, you know, and that's when he's at his best. But he did miss a power of a chance in the second half. Aye, that's just a normal him, but yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, him. yeah let, let's just ignore it and uh, we'll move on to next week anyway. But guys, thanks very much for listening. Successful day for Rangers today. Um, I'm on the flagship pod tomorrow at half past nine if you want to tune in as well. Alec Anderson will be up at some point today with his post-match reaction, depending on if he takes either 45 minutes or maybe even he'll go to a full other time. Who knows, but we'll look forward to that anyway. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.